Hi guys, we're here with Abid from Pass LK and we are here with a very special guest, Mr. Marco Pierre White. Mr. Marco, it's a pleasure having you here with us on board today. I'm just going to ask you a very simple question. To what do you owe your success? Well, the truth is, as a young man, I was never ambitious. I've never been ambitious because I never had the confidence to be ambitious. I was fueled and ruled by my dreams and by my fears of failure. And so when people ask me that question, I always say the same answer. Success is born out of luck. Luck is being given the opportunity. It's awareness of mind that takes advantage of that opportunity. And I've never measured success by wealth. I've measured success within my world by what you put on the plate. Some people would say uh, it's not all about luck. It's about strategy. It's about how you plan things out. It's about how it's about all about the plan you have in mind to get to a certain point. Strategy will compensate for talent, but talent never compensates for strategy. So strategy Very can sure. play a part, but I'm not a strategist. I'm not ambitious. I was ruled by my emotion and by my fears of failure. So in all your years of all your success, your cooking endeavors, everything, you've never had a strategy? Never. Never had a strategy. And if I, ever had a, if I ever had a strategy, it was when I did the service in the kitchen to get the food out to a standard and within a time frame. For, simple, for a simple example, say we had a table of eight people with eight different main courses, everything cooked to order. We had to get all those plates finished to perfection within a window of 15 seconds. There's nothing worse than service being unhinged, food arriving in drib drabs at the table. You want that emotional impact, you want that wow. So when everything's around and the waiters lift off the cloches, bang. The first thing you feel is the warmth of the food, the smell of the food, and then you've got the emotional impact, the visual impact, and then all those plates of food. And then you just go, wow. And then you start to eat. That's amazing. And that's it's, what it's, it's all about. It's that simple. And that's the only time I applied a strategy is in the service. Otherwise, I was fueled by my emotions, which I keep on going back to, and my dreams. And I think, you know, if you want to make something special, then you have to be a romanticist. You have to be an idealist. It's like where we're sitting today. So you've never had a strategy in all your years of hard work. You've never had any sort of plan to do what you were doing. As I've said, I was ruled by my emotions. I'm a romanticist, I'm an idealist. Let's look at where we're sitting. Cinnamon Lodge. Look at this. This is so beautiful. Mother Nature is the true artist. But man created this. And then nature filled it. And that's why it's so special. I had the best night's sleep I've had last night for many years. I slept like a baby. My friend said, did you hear the monkeys this morning, Mark, on the roof? I said, no. I slept for nine hours straight. I've never done that for years and years and years. And then to wake up to this, wow, why would you want to leave? It's paradise. No, they're monkeys. hoping you would stay. I love the elephants. <laughs> the elephants around the corner were sensational. I've seen elephants in the zoo, in the safari park, but to see them in the wild, I was mesmerized by them. Nothing quite like it. I just looked at them, I just... I just couldn't quite believe it. It was like a dream. It was an illusion. It was just extraordinary. I mean, today, when I woke up this morning, I thought of the elephants. That's how powerful that image was. And this is the truth, and I said this earlier on today to several people. I have never been anywhere more beautiful in my life than Sri Lanka. The most beautiful country in the world, and I've been to most corners of the world. And what I've witnessed in a few days is just mind-blowing. I'm sad that I'm here for work and not for pleasure. They'd love to keep you here for pleasure, <laughs> for holiday, for as long as you want. Obviously. I think I could fall in. I, th I think I could be a victim of the Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> Do you know what that is? Um, not quite. I've heard of it's it. It's where you fall in love with your kidnappers. <laughs> <laughs> not sure if you want me to kidnap you, though. <laughs> but you said you'd like to keep me. In a way, yes. <laughs> um, no, I will come back, though. I will, will, will come back. And a friend of mine. Uh, rents a house for two months a year in Gaul 
and he stays for the whole of February and March, and he's invited me, so I think I will be coming back, because it's beautiful. Go on, I mean, amazing. And the place, people, yeah. you know, I've always said what makes a country special is the people, but Sri Lanka has something which most countries don't have, and that's that magic, really. And the people, like today, I was round the corner, and I went for lunch, and the villagers cooked me lunch. I mean, amazing. No equipment, a flame, bricks, long sticks, aluminium pots, and they cooked the most delicious lunch. And then they made this curry with okra, tomatoes, onions, chili paste, herb paste, turmeric, and curry leaves, and coconut milk. Five minutes later, it was done. The vegetables were cooked al dente, the freshness was sensational. In all the years of hard work, in all the years of having luck come your way, have you ever had any bad luck? I've had lots of bad luck in my life. But I think having bad luck is equally as important. Because when you have bad luck in life, you have to reflect. You have to take the knowledge from that experience. We've all been treated badly. We've all made mistakes. We've all had bad luck. So what we have to do is reflect, take the knowledge from that experience, and then allow it to enrich our life. It's as simple as that. There have also been, I'm obviously guessing there's been a lot of ups and downs when you're coming in your, in your life. You've had many challenges to go through. How did you get past them? What exactly did you do when you came through a bad time? It's, it's, it's I just think that, you know, you have to stop. You have to reflect. You have to dissect and understand why something has happened. Sometimes it's your fault, it's your mistake. True. And you have to find the humility within you to put your hands up in the air and say, that was my failing. And the most poisonous sauce in the kitchen, let's not forget, is a chef's ego. That is the most poisonous sauce. So, if you were to say, uh, if you were to keep your ego in consideration, how would you feel? Do you think you... You uh, have to fight the ego every day. The ego... Very true is the most extraordinary part of us. Because when we think we've suppressed it and we've beaten it, it manifests itself into another form and another shape and starts to take you over again. And so every day you have to fight the ego and allow the humility to come through, in my opinion. And by allowing humility to come through, because let's be honest, success, which you want to speak about, is born out of arrogance. People thinking they're good. But greatness comes from humility. And being successful is not good enough. It's all about being great at whatever we do in life. You can have the most humble job in the world, but you can be truly great. You That's can be a humble gardener, I'm going to be using. but you can be a great person. Sure. So, um, moving on to your stay in Sri Lanka. You've seen all sorts of cultures, you've seen all sorts of methods of cooking. How has the Sri Lankan method of cooking hit you so far? How is the culture? What has well, it shown you? Well, today I went to the local village. No scales, no real equipment. The pestle they had was carved out of the trunk of a tree. Sorry, I'll say that. Today I went to the local village and the ladies of the village cooked me lunch. Sensational. But what was really impressive zero equipment. They had a mortar for grinding things and the method they used was amazing. But this mortar was simple. It was a trunk of a tree scooped out. They had stones which they grinded spices with. They built fires with three bricks, long sticks, little aluminium. But what they created was sensational. They took me somewhere I'd never been gastronomically. I had never seen food so simple but so delicious with no equipment. The most important piece of equipment they had was the flame. And one thing that I saw today, those ladies have never strayed from the flame. They're there every single day. And the freshness that they created was mind-blowing, like the fresh water fish. I'm not a fan of fresh water fish. And so I took a small tail piece to begin with. How delicious. 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 I would never have known it was fresh water. 
they chopped this fish and butchered it beautifully and fried it so it was crispy. So if you serve that in the West, they say it's overcooked. Forget that. It's about what it tastes like. That's true. Delicious. So if you were to use the Sri Lankan methods of cooking in the future, would you? I was classically French trained. So my methods are always traditional French, classical French. But what you do do is you take the philosophy, you take the inspiration out of other cuisines. It's like, for example, the Sri Lankan chefs. If they went to France or they went to Italy and they saw the cuisine of that world, they take the inspiration, they take the philosophy, and then they work it with their own world, with their own cuisine. True. And that's what's important in life. Because I would never be able to cook Sri Lankan food like those five ladies. But what I can do is take their magic, their inspiration, and allow it to inspire me, especially with the spices. Like just the way they made a paste with chilies. It was extraordinary. Just crushing it on a stone, that simple. I had to ask, how do you make this? I thought they may have added some oil to it. No, just no straight idea. chilies. Just into a paste, working, work. And that's the other thing. No machinery, but the f how physical those ladies were. And some of them weren't young. And physically working hard, and you just think, wow. It humbles you. Amazing. Amazing. And let's be honest, if it wasn't for Cinnamon Resorts, I would never have had this opportunity. And the British High Commission, and let's not forget Sri Lankan Airlines. They flew me here. That's good food. What gave you the inspiration to become a chef? I was born into very humble beginnings. My father was a chef. My uncle was a chef. My grandfather was a chef. My other uncle was a butcher. From the world that I came from in the north of England, born in the very early 60s, when you, came, when you left school at 16, you tended to follow your father's footsteps. So if your father was a miner, you went down the mines. If your father worked on the ships, you went on the ships. If your father worked in the mills, you went to the mills. That's what happened. My father sent me to Harrogate, which was a spa town, and told me to find a job. The most daunting task in my life. And I went to Harrogate and I found a job at the Hotel St George in Harrogate. And I started there on the 20th of March, 1978. It wasn't great food, but what they taught me was how to push, how to run, how to be consistent, because consistency is born out of discipline. How never to be late, how to go to work when you're not feeling well and let the chef send you home. Never complain about the hours. If I had to work seven days a week, I work seven days a week. That's what they taught me. And in the afternoon, I used to polish the client's shoes and one day I found a little book. It said the Economy Guide to Hotels and Restaurants in Great Britain. What was it about? A guide. A guide. And I opened it up and this man was the most powerful man in Britain. Okay. Restaurant critic. Okay. And I looked at it and I saw that this I saw that restaurants had stars. And the best restaurant in Britain at the time was a little restaurant called the Box Tree in Ilkley, which was fifteen miles down the road. And I walked back into the kitchen that night and I said to myself, if I'm going to be a chef, then maybe I should work in the best place in Britain. And one day I plucked up the courage to knock on their door for a job. And they gave me a job. And that's where my dream began. And that's where I fell in love with gastronomy. Because Mr. Reed and Mr. Long used to tell me stories about the great French restaurants. And that's what ignited something within me, which made me dream of one day winning three stars in Michelin with five red knives and forks. It took me 22 years to achieve it. But that's why we need dreams. You have to be able to see your dreams, because if you can't see your dreams, you'll never make them come true. You must see your dreams, whatever they may be. No matter how small or how large, see them, believe them. If you had to do it all Maybe again, I'm, would you? I'm too old. I'm too fat. <laughs> and, you know, I wouldn't say you're too fat. You're I, have good I have children now. And life changes. And when you're a young man, you're allowed to work seven days a week. But when you have a family and you have a children, your motivation changes. You have a duty. And the last thing I want to say to you today is what I say to my little daughter. She's a ballerina. I say, Mirabel, do you have a dream? 
And she said, yes, Daddy. And I said, well, if you have a dream, then you have a duty and responsibility to yourself to make it come true. And all your viewers, all those young people who are watching you, who have dreams of coming into the restaurant business or the hotel business like Cinnamon Resorts, see your dreams and make them come true. Because if you have a dream, you have a duty to yourself to make it happen. If you had something to say to everyone watching you right now, a few inspiring words, people who want to pursue their dreams but don't know where to start, those kids who don't have a goal, who don't know where to go, what would you tell them? I think what's important, lots of young people don't have the confidence to be vocal, to express themselves. And so therefore, if you can't express yourself vocally, then like myself, do it through your fingers. I always let the plates do the talking for me. And people who might not be expressive with words, then learn to be expressive in another way. Make your dreams come true. Make them come true. You have a duty to yourself to make them come true. Because if you don't make them true, sorry, but if you don't make them come true, then one day you'll have regrets. And think to yourself, only if I'd done this. And let's be honest, when people say, do you have any regrets, Marco? I say no. Because had it not been for all those mistakes I made, you wouldn't be here. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have the knowledge that I have today. I wouldn't have the experience that I have today. Because mistakes are fine as long as you take the knowledge from the mistake. Thank you so much I Mr. Hope you got what you for wanted. being with Mark us. Call me Marco. Thank you so much for being Thank with us. Thank you very today. much. I love your cameraman, by the way. The director's not bad, and the PR girl from Cinnamon Resorts is all right. And this one's a star boy. I'd like him to come to England with me. Nothing about me? I was getting to you. I was, you always leave the best <laughs> until last. You're fantastic. Are you, tell you what's very good. You're like the Norman Parkinson of Sri Lanka. You allow people to speak, which is a great talent when you're going to be an interviewer. Thank That's you so much. It was God a pleasure bless. having you. Thank you. Thank you so much.